Okay, great. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Um, back on the main stage again. And this time it's with one of our partner universities from Limerick in the, the southwest of Ireland, Mary Immaculate College. And uh, Alison Ryan is joining us from MIC today and it's going to be talking about liberal arts programs and pathway programs there as well. So over to you, Alison. Oh, thank you so much, Ray. Um, hi, everyone. I would just like to thank you for joining me today. I know you've seen a lot of presentations, so I promise you mine is full of pictures, just to give you an idea of Limerick and the campus, and there won't be too much text to bore you, or so I hope. So I'm just going to share my screen now, and then I shall pull up my presentation. So can you see that, Ray? I can. If you just want to go into presenter mode. Yep, yeah, perfect. Yep, yeah, should be there. It's a slight delay, but yeah, it gets there in the end. That's great. Thank you so much. Oh. Okay. All right. So uh, this is a picture of our front gate on a very sunny day. One of my favorite pictures. Um, but I'll just take you here now to our first slide. So this is the, the main campus building. It was built in 1898. Uh, we are an inclusive multi-campus university level college of education and liberal arts. Um, this is just one of many buildings on campus. It's the oldest one. Don't worry, we do have some modern buildings as well. Uh, the latest ones were opened just in 2010. And this is the, the other more modern side of the campus. Um, so we have undergraduate programs as well as a range of graduate programs, and they go to diploma, master's and PhD level. Um, additional subjects that we also have for international students, um, maybe not in, of interest to everybody, would be Irish heritage studies or beginner's Irish language, but certainly English as a foreign language and English for academic purposes. They're, they're very much um, very popular with our, our international students. Um, what can I say really, the college, it, it's got a very friendly and walkable campus and we're located right in the city. So that actually means you're literally a 10 minute walk to the city centre and on the other side of us, you're probably a 15 or 20 minute walk to a big shopping mall with a cinema and everything. Um, it also means you have accommodation options within walking distance too. So if you don't want to stay in student accommodation, you have your pick of private housing very, very close to the campus. Um, and in terms of the size of the campus, we are actually, we are continually growing. And at the moment, we have about 5,000 students within our uh, diverse community. So uh, up to, in a year, we could get maybe 500 international students between all of the programs, the short term and, and long term programs that we run. Um, so just a little bit more about the accommodation. If you're looking at college accommodation, we can offer it at a cost of between 2,000 300 or 2,500 per semester. So you have a few different options and the, the cost will really depend on what option you go for. Um, what I can say about Limerick is that we are a very low cost city. So there is really excellent value to be had there in student accommodation. A little bit more about Limerick. We're also actually known as a student city um, and we're a riverside city. So we are the third largest city in Ireland, but our population is still in the city is still just about 100,000. So that may not seem particularly large to some of you from bigger countries. Um, but we do have three institutes of higher education in the city, of which Mary Immaculate is one. So that means we have a great vibrant uh, student culture in the city with over 20 or 30,000 students um, out of that population of 100,000. Um, we also have our own international airport, that's Shannon International Airport. So again, if you are studying in Limerick, it makes a lot of sense to, to fly into Shannon and be very, very close to your, your college there. Um, in terms of where we are, I'm sure you know where Dublin is. Uh, so we're actually the opposite side of the country. That's where we are. But you can actually see it's still only about maybe a two and a half hour drive. And there are buses, trains, if you do want to go to Dublin. Likewise, we're, we're very close to Galway and Cork as well. So it's, it's really the best of both worlds situated in the middle of, of, of all of them there. So just to go into a little bit about the programmes on offer, we are uh, liberal arts, as I mentioned. Our most popular subject will be the Bachelor of Arts. So you can see the full list of subjects there. You can actually choose four of those in first year and you can literally try any, any ones that you want. 
Uh, then by the end of first year, you should have decided on two that you want to take to degree level. So then you actually graduate with a, a double major, essentially. Something that's a bit more niche should be our BA in Contemporary Theatre Studies. This is our theatre on campus, but it's not just for students. It's actually open for the whole country. So we get a lot of national plays and, and performances there. And this really is the classroom for, for the students when they're studying this programme. And there's a lot of, um, lot of um, hands-on work, really. It's, it, there's less of a focus on the acting, while there is acting in it. There's also a focus on getting you technical skills as well. So it's quite a unique programme in that respect. Um, then we also have our early childhood care and education. That is a Bachelor of Arts in that. This is another program that focuses very much on hands-on and practical work. So really from year one, you're actually out in um, early play groups getting your hands-on experience. So by, by the time you graduate at the end of year four, you've actually got your, your experience on top of your degree. So it's a really fantastic interactive program if you're interested in working with very young children. Then on our second campus in Thurlis, we have three programs that come under the BA in Education and Business Studies. So the third subject that you can study then is either accounting, mathematics, or religious studies. What you'll actually find with this is it's not just a qualification in business and accounting or business and maths. It's also a qualification to teach them at second level. So it's really, in a sense, it's, it's a concurrent degree that you have your qualification to work in the field or to actually teach it to students as well. Something to remember is that a degree from MIC is transferable worldwide. So we are fully recognized internationally through the Irish National Framework of Qualifications and the European Credit Transfer and Accumulation System. In terms of our fees then, so for undergraduates, uh, our fees across all the programs are just €11,128 per year. That is actually excellent value, even within the country itself. Uh, while we do have much lower fees in other countries, um, we, we do have offer great value in this program at MIC. And of course, payment plans can be arranged for any of our students in advance. So payments can actually be split into smaller increments for you to pay. Now, something else that's actually a little bit of a cost saver. Um, there is a possibility to graduate in just three years and save on the cost of tuition of a fourth academic year. So for two of the programs I mentioned earlier, that's the Bachelor of Arts or the Bachelor of Arts in Contemporary and Applied Theatre Studies, students can actually skip year three and go straight from year two into year four. That's because year three at MIC is our study abroad year. So students, well, Irish students are very much encouraged to get out of the country and experience a semester or a year in another university, either in you know, Europe or the US or Asia. But because you are already studying internationally, we consider you to be fulfilling that requirement already. So year three, of course, you can do it if you wish. But if you want to actually go straight into fourth year and finish your degree, you can do that as well. So if you do wish to study, as I mentioned, we have partners all across the world. So you'd be talking about the European Union, uh, United States, Latin America, Asia and Australia. Equally, you can choose to do a work placement uh, for your semester or for your year. So these are all different options that you really have um, semester abroad, work placement or go straight into year four. What some of our international students have been doing is going with the option to skip year three. So they do year one, two, and four. And then in the fourth year of their time in Ireland, they actually do a master's with us. So that means after four years, you're actually graduating with an undergraduate degree and a master's degree. And all of our masters are completed in just one year and they can cost between 9,000 euro or 11,000 euro, depending really which one you're actually choosing. Under liberal arts, there's applied linguistics, history, media studies, modern English literature or contemporary um, Irish studies. And they're all on the, the taught programs. And then taught education programs include a master of education, a structured PhD, or um, we also have one that's focused on uh, middle leadership and mentoring and school settings. And you can either get a grad cert, a diploma or an ed, an ed in those. 
And of course, we have research postgraduates as well. So you can do an MA or a PhD in arts by research or MA or PhD in education by research. Supports on campus then, we have everything that you would expect. Um, we're very much uh, into looking after students pastorally. So we have a chaplaincy, counselling service, medical centre, health promotion unit, academic learning centre, and of course our students' union, which is very popular among students. I should say as well that the academic learning centre is a fantastic resource for our international students. It's open to all undergraduates, but I think particularly the international students get, get a lot of benefit from it. Um, of course, we also have sports facilities and camp on campus and around the city because we're so close to the city. Really, uh, the whole city is your oyster. So you can do any of the, um, the events that we have on campus and, of course, sign up to our, our gym as well. Um, in terms of the international students, we like to make sure they are fully integrated with the Irish students. So between our, our thriving clubs and societies and our class sizes, um, there is really good opportunity for the students to get fully integrated there. As I mentioned, there are 5,000 students on campus. So that means the class sizes can be that bit smaller. And that actually means there's an excellent student lecture ratio, as well as an excellent, you know, uh, small group for the students to get to know each other. So our entry requirements then. Uh, once you graduate and you reach the requirements from DIFC, we'd be looking for a B in your, your English for Academic Purposes. Then, of course, you would have to get a B, a B and a C in your other subjects. And one of those has to include mathematics. And you would also need to have a second language um, that maybe you would have gotten at high school or per, perhaps, you know, you, you studied it separately. But there, there is a requirement for, for an English language there. So I have gone through that very, very quickly, I know. Um, I didn't want to run over my time too much, but this is my, my email address here. It's alison.ryan at mic.ul.ie. Um, if you'd like to ask me any questions or, or find out any more about the programs I've mentioned. Um, I do also have a booth at the, um, the event here today. So it's open for another, just under an hour, I'd say. So if you have any questions, I really would welcome you to, um, to drop by, ask me, and I'd be happy to give you any more information that you might need. So I'm going to stop sharing so, my screen. Yeah, we, we do have one question that's come through for you, Alison. So it's, it's basically, what are the average entry requirements for students coming from the Cambridge education system or specifically the Zimbabwean secondary education system? So is there is there a case that, MIC would accept directly or would those students always need a foundation program? Well, it does depend on the country. Um, like, it's really, there's, there's a big list of countries, so I kind of do have to check each one. Like, for instance, I just know off the top of my head because we do get a lot of interest from Nigeria. I know yep. there's a foundation requirement for Nigeria. It's saying that if you have done um, your, your GCEs or your um, international baccalaureate, whatever country you're in, if you have done those internationally recognized um, exams, that automatically means direct entry. Um, okay, so, so what we would do is in this case, we would ask the student to either email the um, student transcripts, high school transcripts to you directly, exactly. or they can send them to DIFC and we can discuss with you on a case by case basis. So like IB is a great example. You know, I don't know what your IB points requirement is. Ours would normally be around 22 points. I think we're up at 26. Yeah, so something like this. So if, you know, I'm not sure who the question came from, but if you want to either contact me or contact Alison directly, once we see the transcripts and the results, we can advise then whether the student could apply directly to MIC or whether they will need a pathway through DIFC mm -hmm. first. Exactly. And that, that's really the best way to do it is on a case by case basis. All of the countries are so different. Some require foundation, some don't. And then, as I said, if you have done the, um, the internationally recognized exams, that negates everything else. Yeah, I think. And that's that's certainly the case for us. Like we have general entry requirements for, you know, IGCSEs, AS levels, A levels and IB. But then there are country specific requirements. So if they've taken the general certificate, um, of secondary education in their home country. Typically, it, it's not a blanket yes or no, but typically those programs 
will be a 12 year program and you will require foundation. Um, mm -hmm. but, it, but again, it's best to look at it case by case. Yeah, exactly. I, I would definitely say that. So look, if there aren't any further questions, um, quick ones, as Alison said, you know, um, MIC do have their own booth and Alison will be available for another 45 minutes or so. So if you want to go into MIC, um, you can actually ask the questions directly to Alison. And then in just under 15 minutes, we will be back here on the main stage with RCSI um, and uh, RCSI UCD campus is called RUMC from Penang in Malaysia. Now there is one more question brief question just coming in sorry um oh, yeah. the second language option would that be a requirement for international students who studied in english speaking countries so again typically looking at the african continent where they speak uh, english as a first language mm -hmm. yeah it is actually even in the united states so the the requirement is also that you have your good level of english that you or if, if english is your first language that you have a second language maybe Spanish, like in the US, they would generally do Spanish or something. But yeah, we, there is a requirement to, to have a second language really across um, all of the countries. Okay. So again, probably the advice there is send us the details um, and we will look at it in case by case and give you the advice. It's difficult sometimes to give blind advice mm -hmm. um, where we don't have all the facts in front of us. And if we have the information, then we can give you the right answer that allows you and your family to make the right decision for you. Exactly. Okay. Look, thanks a million, Alison. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us today and uh, quite insightful and uh, hope to speak to you soon. Oh, thank you so much, Ray. And thanks to anybody who joined. Like I said, I, I will be able to, to answer any more questions. So I look forward to meeting you. No problem. Thanks a million. And see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.